पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शांति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बागरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम गुकार सन्वर्तक अंधकार निरोधि गुरुत्यभीयत सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा नम श्री शंकरानंद गुरुपादुजन्मने सविलास महामोह ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणे आनंदमय ईशोयम बहुस्यामित्यवैक्षत हिण्यगर्भरूपो भूत सुप्ति स्वप्न यथा भव क्रमेण युगपद्वैषा सृष्टिर्ज्ञेया यथा श्रुति द्विविध श्रुति सद्भाव द्विविध स्वप्न दर्शना सूत्रात्मा सूक्ष्म सर्वीयघनात्मक सर्वाहमानधारिवादि Now it's been discussed here the mode of creation, how the creation came into being as the Lord had the sankalp or deliberation, bahusya may I become many. At the beginning of creation, this first thought arose, may I become many. How did that thought arise? In accordance with the totality of all the karma or actions which had to be expressed at, by all the jivas at the beginning of creation. So all the jivas are sleeping and all the samskaras or karmas are there and when they are ready to manifest, then the totality of all the karma gives rise to one thought, which is what we call ikshanam or paryalochanam or seeing or deliberating. So Lord as though deliberates at the beginning of creation, may I become many. And with the thought that each where Allah himself becomes what we call hiranyagarbha. <coughs> How does it happen? Suptihi swapno yasabhave. Just as sleep becomes dream. So how dream is created from the sleep? Sleep is unmanifest and dream is the subtle manifestation. And so, so from each one is unmanifest. There is hiranya garbha or the first subtle manifestation comes to the game. How does the creation take place? Does it create, take place in a certain sequence? Or does it take place in a random manner? 
because you take it either way, because we find both the kinds of statements in Upanishad, in Paitri itself we find right in the beginning of the Brahmananda Valley a whole description of sequence of creation, how from Brahman the space and the air and the fire and so forth, or later on in the same valley we say that idam sarvam asvija, that all of this was created. So somewhere we find the reference that the whole universe is created in a sequence, follow certain sequence of evolution. In other place we find that it's just a random simultaneous creation. Both are okay because creation is comparable to dream and we have both the kinds of dreams. We have a dream where we find systematic evolution of things or sometimes we have a dream where we find everything at random altogether simultaneously. And therefore, not a great deal of importance is given to this process of creation. As you said, the purpose is something else. Even when the sequence is described, the purpose is not so much in the description of the sequence as to enable us to go back to the source by the reverse sequence. And where a random or simultaneous creation is described, the purpose is to show that this is mithya. <coughs> then, the first created one is called Hiranyagarbha, meaning Ishwara, the Lord himself, becomes Hiranyagarbha. He is called Sutratma because he is the one that is the self of all. He informs every living being. He is, he is called Sukshmadeha, meaning he is called the subtle body. And he is the mass of all the living beings. He is the one who is identified with all the Upadis. And he is the one who is possessed of the power of desire, power of knowledge, and power of action. So, Kriya Jnana, Ichcha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti. <coughs> now, continuing, Hiranyagarbha Avasthayam Jagat Pradita Uddhastanta Maha. What is the nature of Jagat Pratiti? In the state of what we call Hiranyagarbha, or the first, the totality of all subtle bodies are created, yet they are not become manifest in a gross form. So, how does the creation look like? Jagat Pratiti, how does the universal Jagat look like at that time? For that, a Dhrishtanda or an illustration is given here in the verse 201 there. Pratyusheva <coughs> Pradosheva Magno Mande Tamasyayam Loko Bhati Yatha Tadvada Aspashtam Jagadikshyade Pratyusheva Pradosheva Magna Mande Tamasyayam Loko Bhati Yatha so yatha just as mande tamasi, when there is what we call semi-darkness. So total darkness or deep sleep is comparable to state of unmanifest or Ishvara. And total wakefulness is a state comparable to, to virat or the manifest creation. Hiran Nigarbha is an in-between state, like dream is an in-between state. So there is a deep sleep state, total unmanifestation, the waking state, clear manifestation, dream, is unclear manifestation, antaravastha, in between stage. Similarly also, there is total darkness where you don't see anything, total light where you see the day, so between night and day there is in between state, which is called pratyusha, usha kalaha, so the time of dawn, which is the sandhikara, or the time between the night and day, or pradosha, pradosha means the time of evening. So there also after sunset, still it is joining between the day and the night. Then there is a situation of what we call part, the, the semi-darkness situation, semi-darkness, a twilight situation, neither bright nor totally dark. So, Pratyu Sheva, Pradyu Sheva, either in the dawn or dusk, in those situations, I am Lokaha, this world, Yatha, so, Mande Tamasi, when there is only semi darkness situation existing at the time of dawn or dusk, Yatha Ayam Lokaha Magnaha Bhati. How does this world appear at that time? It appears unclear. So, 
Tathadvatam Jagadikshare. In the state of what you call Hirandagarbha, the world is not yet given clear outline. If a clear outline is there, it will be very clear. Not a distolian manifest, it is partially manifest. And so Hirandagarbha state is described as a state existing at the time of dawn or dusk, where things are seen unclearly. They are seen all right, but not very clearly. <coughs> that is a common drishtanta. Evam loka prasiddha drishtanta abhidaya yatha dhautahe di purokta sloge adhitam lanchitam padam drishtanta di. This is a drishtanta illustration of what we call semi darkness situation that is unknown to us. So this is what the author has been doing. He gives two illustrations. One the illustration which is common known to everyone, other the illustration of the metaphor that is introduced in this particular chapter, of what we call Chitrapada or a painting on the canvas. So he goes reverse back to that particular illustration. Uruvakta Shloka Adhitam. In the earlier sloka, in the verse number two, that the standard illustration that was given, Lanchitam Padam Dhrishtantadi, that canvas, which has been stars, that illustration is, is shown here, illustration is given, just to give us an idea of what is the state of Hiranyagarbha, what is the state of dream, with that Dhrishtanta, again we say in verse 202. Sarvato Lanchito Mashya Yathasya Ghattita Sukshmakaravistakeshya Now when we draw a picture or a painting, when we are painting on a canvas, they see these four stages, as you said, first is just the cloth, a canvas, second is when there is stars, third is with the black ink, the dark ink, you just draw the outline, all the outline of the painting, and fourth stage is when you fill in all the distinct colors. So here the third stage is being talked about. Plain cloth is Param Brahma, which is without any qualification at all, and you apply the stars, it becomes ready now for the painting, it's called Ishwaraha. So, Chaitanyam and with Maya. On that now, you draw the main outlines with dark ink. Sarvataha, Lanchitaha, Mashya. Mashi means ink. Mashya by ink. Yatha, Syad, Ghattita, Pataha. Yatha, Ghattita, Pataha. Sarvataha, Lanchita, Syad. Just as it starts to canvas. Then we draw the outline all over with dark ink. How do you, how is it? Now you see the outline of the painting, but still the colors are not painted, and then we don't see distinctly. It's different from when the canvas was totally plain, then you could not see anything. But when you then draw these outlines, then you get some idea of what the final picture will be, but still not a clear idea. Similarly also the state of Hirandigar has given some idea of outline of the whole universe, but still not a clear idea. Sukshmakarahi tatha ishasya vapuhu sarvatrayanchitam. Similarly, the body of the law, body of Ishwara, is lanchitam, is also now, there is an outline. Sukshmakarahi, by what we call the subtle body. So, by the subtle body, the body of the Lord, is now there is an outline in the form of this subtle body. So imagine Ishwara is, is Brahman with a coating of Maya. Upon that you have the main outline of how the universe is going to be, that is Hiranyagarbha. Subsequently when we will fill in all the colors, it will be what we call Virat or cosmic, uh, this gross creation. So the Tikaga Yatha Ghattitaha Pataha Mashimayahi Akar Visheshahi Lanchita Bhavi Just as Pataha means cloth Just as Ghattita has a cloth that is stars Mashimayahi Akar Visheshahi Akar Visheshahi by specific forms which are from the ink Lanchita Bhavi How it becomes outlined Tatha Mayinaha Ishwasya Vapuhu Apanchigad Bhutakariyahi 
Lunga sa rin ang hindi lang siya, mit kaya sa hai, and si lang naman ay also, this wapu humin, this whole form of the Lord, which at the moment is undifferentiated, unmanifest, and there we have now outlines which are created by the subtle bodies, which is totality of subtle body, created from five subtle elements. So first five elements are created in the subtle state, from that we have the totality of all the subtle bodies, and that forms as the outline, upon the body of the Lord. And subsequently those outlines will develop into specific forms when we have the gross creation. Buddhya rohaya vayhavad tristantam tramaha Well, continues to give further illustrations. Vayhavad tristanta bahulya asin that he has to offer us so many illustrations. Vayhavad on account of richness of illustrations that he has buddhya-rohaya, in order that this idea gets properly appreciated by buddhi, meaning buddhya-rohaya, that this idea of what exactly this hidden negative state is, in order that it can be very clearly appreciated or apprehended by our intellect. He gives another illustration now because there is a plenty, there are plenty of illustrations. And so in the verse 203, yet another illustration is given. Sasyam va saka jatam va Sarvatom kuritam yatha Komalam tadva devaishaha Pelavo jagadam kuraha Yet another illustration. Because these are illustrations that we find in the literature. When you find different tikas, then hidden nigar is compared to different things. Sasyamva, shaka jatamva, shaka means, shaka means vegetable. Sasyam means like corn or rice, paddy. So sasyamva, shaka jatamva, just as the rice or the corn or the vegetables, sarvataha ankuritam yatha. So when you sow the seeds, first come out the sprouts. The whole field is filled with sprouts of either the corn or different vegetables. At that time, Komalam, they will tender. So how tender sprouts are all over when the seeds sprout? Tadvad e esaha pelavaha jagadankuraha pelavaha mrudulaha and similarly esaha hirannigarvaha. Same manner also hirannigarvaha can be compared to jagadankuraha. Imagine the whole creation as tree. So before the tree develops into a whole tree, first it is a sprout. And before that it is seed. So seed is compared to Ishvara. The sprout is compared to Hiranyagarbha. Or Ishvara is compared to seed, Hiranyagarbha is compared to sprout, and Virat, the whole cosmic creation, is compared to the tree. So similarly, just as the sprouts are Similarly also, Hiranyagarbha is nothing but this creation of universe in a sprout form, which is very tender. So, Pelavaha, Pelam, Nulha, a very tender sprout, this Hiranyagarbha is of the whole creation. This is another illustration because often Shankaracharya compares. He uses all these words. You will find in Shankaravasya, Sutratma, Sarva Jiva Dhanatmada, and Jaradankuraha. So, these kind of illustrations or expressions we find. And he, the author uses them here. <coughs> okay. Evam sutra atma surupam vishadikritya. In this manner, I will very clearly explain what is the nature of sutra atma of hidden nigarva. Tasseva avastha vedam tamchikra bhuta karya upadigam virajam dhastanda trayana vishadayati. Tasseva avastha vedam. Now the second avastha, the second stage. Subsequent stage when Hiranyagarbha now evolves into what we call Virat or the cosmic universe, cosmic creation. So Ishwara, the Lord, who is endowed with the Maya, which is unmanifest, itself evolves as Hiranyagarbha, and same Ishwara who is now Hiranyagarbha, further evolves as what we call Virat or the gross cosmos. <coughs> so Sutra Atma Sarugam Vishintasya Avasthavaram Panchikal, all those five elements which are until this point in what we call the subtle state. Now they undergo what we call 
panchikaranam or the process of grossification and we have the five gross elements and their combination of all the elementals and from that we have the whole creation. So panchikala bhuta karyo padikam bhuta karyo that is the effect of the five elements which becomes upadi viradam viradam nothing but the same chaitanya having the upadi of the totality of all the gross bodies. The standard train of shayadayadi that virat is now being explained clearly with the help of three illustrations which were given earlier for Hiranyagarva. Same three illustrations are given now for virat in the verse 204. Atapa bhata loko va Pato va varna puritaha Sasyam va phalitam yadvata Tatha pashtava purvirar Atapa adhata loko va How the world at suryoda anantaram Atapena abhadam prakasitah lokah Atapa abhata lokah Atava means sunlight. Abhata means prakashita hai, illumined by. Loka means world. So when the sun rises, how the whole world that's clearly illumined by the sunlight. So before the sun rises, there is a situation of dawn. That is a situation compared to Hiranyagarbha. Before the dawn, there was dark night. That is a situation compared to Ishwara. Then dawn compared to Hiranyagarbha. Now the sun rises. And the whole universe is very clearly illumined. And how the whole universe can be clearly perceived, then that is comparable to the Virat. <coughs> so you can say the universe was there. Different ways of looking at it. The whole world is there, except that on account of blanket of darkness, you don't see it at night. And then when the dawn comes, there is semi-darkness or semi-light, and you can see the general outlines. And when the sun comes, you can clearly see the outlines which of which that is already there. So again nothing new is created. You can imagine the whole universe already being there, just going out of our sight on account of the blanket of darkness. That is another way of looking at it. Patova, Varanapuritaha, or look at our painting which we have now outlined. Now Varanapurita, Varana means color. When you now fill up the whole painting with colors, then how all the forms are very clearly evident. Sasyam va phalitam yadvata or look at the field. Formula of the field is Ishvara. Then there are sprouts hidden in the And now imagine all the, 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 the vegetables or all the corn etc. is now totally ready. And all the fruits are there. The corns are there. All the vegetables are there. Everything is totally evolved. So sasyam va phalitam yadvata tatha spashta vopur virad. Similarly also virad is spashta vopuhu. So also this Virat cosmic person is just as clear as that. So the whole universe now clearly manifests. This is the evolution process. Tat Sadbhave Pramanamaha Virat Sadbhave Somebody may say, where did you, uh, how do you say that there is something called Virat? Now imagine, understand what is meant by Virat. Virat is same Param Brahma. Having the whole universe as a body. Hiranyagarbha is saying Param Brahma, having all subtle bodies as a body. Ishwara is saying Hiran, Param Brahma, having Maya as this body or Upadi. So Param Brahma with Maya as the Upadi is called Ishwara. That Maya then gets evolved into what we call subtle bodies. Same Param Brahma with Upadi or subtle bodies is called Hiranyagarbha. And those subtle bodies further evolve in form of gross bodies. So same Param Brahma with the Upadhi of gross bodies is called Virat. So the whole universe is only one entity, it's an organic whole. Although there is a diversity, multiplicity in the whole creation. And so there is one thread which connects the whole universe, there is what we call an organic whole here. There is one harmony, one principle which is called, so that is called Param Brahma. That is in and through Avasti Bhavi Priyam, in and through every name and form, and thus the whole universe becomes like the body of the same Param Brahma. <coughs> so it's one. There are not many, even at the gross level also there is one. At subtle level also it is one. At causal level it is one. And of course, 
at the end, at the level of the attributeless, it is one in the ultimate sense. <coughs> so where do you find the reference of what we call this cosmic person? If this is one person, the whole universe is one, and that is what we call the virad, the, the cosmos, where do you find its reference? Tat sadbhāve, meaning virat sadbhāve, pramāna maha. He gives your pramāna, meaning a quotation from the Shruti. <coughs> Says in the verse 205. Vishwarupa Bhyar Eshah Ukta Sukta Vipaurushe Dhatra Vistamba Pariyantan Etasya Vayavan Vidhu So where do you find this cosmic form being referred to? Vishwarupa Adhyaya. In the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, we call Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. This is where we find how Lord Krishna manifests his cosmic form. But Arjuna sees the whole universe in the body of the Lord. So, Eshaha Uptaha. So, Virat Purusha is very picture picturesquely described in the 11th chapter of the Gita. Eshaha means Virat again. Paurusha <coughs> Sukta Bhi, and also in the Veda, in, in what is known as Purusha Sukta, Sahasra Shiyasa Purusha, Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Vat, Sabhumin Vishwato Vritva, Atyatishtha Dasangulam, Brahmano Samakamasi, Bahu Rajan Yakrataha, Uru Tadasya Dvaishya, Padhyavam Shudra Vijayata, Chandrava Manaso Jataha, Chakshu Suyo Jayata, Mukhadindra Chagnistya, Pranad Vayu Ajayata, Nabhya Asidantariksham, Shishno Dev Samavartata, Padhyam Bhumi, Vishasrotrat, Suttafa Lokagum Akalpayan. So this is how the cosmic purusha, cosmic body of this. One law is described in Purusha Sutta. Very beautiful. Aneka Vaktrayanam, Aneka Adhya Darshanam, Aneka Divya Bharanam, Divya Aneko Bhyatayudham, Divya Malyam Bharanam. This is the description of the 11th chapter of Gita, where the Lord is described, the cosmic form. <coughs> so the Tika Dara, Vishwarupa Adhyaya Rao Kidra Grupam Uditam. And what we call Vishwarupa Adhyaya, so, 11th chapter, or the Purusha Sutta, Kidra Grupa Muditam. What is the kind of form that actually has been stated in the 11th chapter or the Purusha Sutta? Ijakaṅkṣaya Vammādhistam Pariyanda Jaga Grupa Muditam Ityāha. We find in those places Brahmādhistam Pariyandam. And look at footnote number 5. Sambo nāma Sukshmatam Kita Visheshaha. Very often, stamba is, is interpreted as stambha, meaning a post. From Brahma we write it to a post. Or from Brahma to a blade of grass, we say, stamba. Here it says, stamba is sukshmatamaha kita vishesha. It's some kind of a creature, very small insect of some kind, extremely minute insect. This stamba, like an amoeba or whatever it is. Or unicellular organism. I don't think that you could see that time, but the minutest thing that you can see is called stamba. So Brahma is the biggest thing you can imagine, right? It was Stamba, which is the minutest thing that you can perceive. The whole creation, beginning from creator, right up to the Stamba, Dhatra, the Stamba Pariyantan. All the living beings, beginning from Dhatri, meaning Brahma, right up to a little creature, Etan, Asya Avayavan Viduhu. All of these are supposed to be Avayava, meaning the limbs of this Virat Purusha. As you said, how heavens is his head, earth are the feet, the intermediate space is the middle body, how moon is the, the mind, the sun is the eyes, and so on and so forth, fire is the mouth. So all of these become the avara or the limbs of this universal person. <coughs> so the creation now is described, you know, right up to the virat. Etavata prakruta kimayatam, what are we going to do? What's the use of all this description in what we are discussing here? Why are you describing all these things? 
Sometimes you get off, get off track, you know, and you get so enthusiastic about giving all sorts of details which may not be relevant to the subject and discussion. So, Prakrute, in the subject and the discussion, Etavata Kimayatam. So, by this description, what do we get with reference to the subject and the discussion? Iti Asamke. So, Antaryami. What is an discussion is what we call this Antaryami. Or Ananda Maya Jeeva. So, Antaryami Prabhupi Kuddala Kali Pariyantam Vastujadam Pratyekam Ishwaratyena Poojyatam Iti Aha. He says there is a purpose. In saying that, that's the purpose of the Shruti. Whenever Shruti talks about creation and says the whole creation came from Brahma and from Brahma the sequence of creation is described, as I said earlier, the intention is not so much to describe or emphasize the sequence as such, but to emphasize the fact that the whole creation is nothing but Brahma. Like someone who described to us that in the beginning there was merely a lump of gold and from that the bar came and from that the wire came, and from that the species came, from that the links came, and from that the chain came. So someone may describe the evolution of chain in all these different stages. So what's the intention there? Intention is that every stage, what we have is nothing but gold. That gold alone is called lump, that alone is called bar, that alone is called wire, that alone is called the links, that alone is called the chain. At every stage, it is gold alone, and therefore, what we have in the form of chain is nothing but gold. So, may look upon chain as gold. That's the purpose that is served. Sarvam Khalodam Brahma. The whole universe is nothing but Brahma alone. <coughs> so, that is the purpose of description of Shruti, I mean the Srishti. The reason for discussing the creation in this text also is only that, that whatever there is, is nothing but the Lord. So, Antaryami Prabhupi, beginning from Antaryami, Kuddalaka Adi Pajyantam. What is Kuddalaka? Kuddalaka means a spade or a sugar. Spade or an axe. So, with which we, uh, you know, uh, you break the ground. So, dig the ground. That's called Kuddalaka. In, in Gujarat we call it Kodari, you know. So, Kuddalaka. In Marathi also the similar word must be there. So, Right up to that, meaning, meaning from Ishvara, right up to this, this spade or a shovel, shovel, the whole Vastu Jatam, that whole group of things obtaining between these two extremes, Pratyekam Ishvara Tvena Poojitam, just as every link is gold, so also every name and form is nothing but Ishvara or Brahman, isn't it? Ishvara alone is modified into the whole creation, therefore, Whatever there is in creation is nothing but Ishvara. And may look upon everything in creation as Ishvara alone. And Ishvara means Lord is one who is to be revered and worshipped. So may you worship everything in the universe as Ishvara. So Vastu Jatam Pratyekam Ishvaratvena Poojitam. That everything in the whole universe be looked upon or, or revered or worshipped as Lord Himself. That is the purpose that the description of the creation serves. And that is being described in the next three verses. Isha Sutra Virad Veda Vishnu Rudra Indra Vannaya Vidna Bhairava Mairala Marika Yaksharakshasa Vitrakshatriya Vichudra Gavaksha Mruga Pakshina Aswatha Vadasuta Adya Javavri Hitranga Jalapasana Vritkastha Kastha Vasya Kuddalaka Deha Ishvara Sarva Evaite Pujita Phaladayina Hai 
ಭೈರವಾಫ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ Mairala, you know, Mairala also, I think is that Marika is, is a Devi, is a Goddess. Yaksa, Demigod. Rakshasaha, Demons. Vipra, Brahmin. Kshatriya, Kshatriya. Vip means Vaishya. Sudraha, Go means Cow. Aswa, the Horses. Mrida means Animals. Pakshinaha, the Birds. Ashwatha, is a shwatha tree, like the people tree. Vata, a banyan tree. Chuta, a mango tree. All the trees, all the devatas, all the human beings, all the animals and birds, all the trees, and then all the plants. Yara, vihi, rice, barley, trina, the grass, all of these also. Then further, jala, water, now going to the inert. Pachana means stone, Mrit means clay, Kastha the wood, lumber or wood, Vasya, Vasya means chisel, Kuddalaka, Kuddalaka again, the same Kodali, which means the spade. All of these, Ishwaraha, Sarva, Eva, Eva, all of them are Ishwara. Can you imagine that grass also is Ishwara, birds also are Ishwara, animals also are Ishwara, trees also are Ishwara, plants also are Ishwara, even the shovel. and X and everything that you come across, microphone, you can add also the table, book, microphone, paper, everything is nothing but Ishwara alone because he alone is the material cause. So the material cause is, is to be found wherever the effect is. The stars we find the clay wherever the part is. In this case, Ishwara is Abhinda Nath, Tupadana Karam, is both the efficient as well as the material cause and that's where she is to be found everywhere. And so you cannot go wrong if you worship anything with Ishwara because both ways Ishwara is there. You can worship sun and the moon and the fire and water and everything as symbol of Ishwara or as Ishwara themselves. Ishwara alone is sun and moon and fire and earth and water and trees or you can look upon tree as Ishwara. So either tree can become what we call a pratik or a symbol upon which is superimposed the idea of Lord or tree itself can be looked upon as Lord because Lord alone is manifest as tree. Either way, in one case, it is what we call material cause, in another case, it is what we call pratika or symbol. So you will find all these things worshipped in India. They worship trees, plants, every conceivable thing they worship. And particularly in the villages when you go, uh, like in Saurashtra and such places you travel, and you wonder all you have to do is, if you want some, if you want that people should start worshipping something, you have to make a beginning. Like a Mullah Nasruddin, you know, all he did was, once he was gazing at the sky. The other fellow came walking by, he saw this Mullah gazing at the sky, he also started gazing there. There were four, six, in it was fifteen minutes, sixty-five people were all gazing at the sky. And then some other fellow came and said, what are you looking at? I don't know. Ask him. What are you looking at? I don't know. Ask him. And ultimately, nobody knew what they were doing at. All you know, they asked ultimately, hey Mullah, what are you looking at? Uh, just like that, you know. There is nothing. So all you do is to just make a beginning and everyone will follow. And that's what we find in the villages there. You take a piece of cloth or take a thread. So when they worship the trees, typically what they do is take a thread and go around the tree and pour some water. Or very often they look upon tree as, as an abode of some god, some deity. They take a piece of cloth and offer it there. It is very common. Particularly cloth is offered to goddess. 
You know, so you take a piece of cloth, colored cloth or something, offer it there. And soon enough you will return after one month, you will find fifteen other clothes there and all kinds of threads because you will start doing that. A lot of superstition, but the idea is that people have no difficulty in looking upon anything you've got. Of course you can exploit them and you can do whatever you want with them also. But the one who loses is the one who exploits. The one who exploited never loses because he has Shraddha. But anyway, here it says that all of these can be looked upon Ishwara and you can worship them as Ishwara, Pujitaha, Paladayana. When you worship them, then they give rise to result because it is not that the tree gives rise to any result. But then you look upon the tree of Ishwara. It is that Shraddha which you have in your own mind which generates the result. It's not that the water actually removes your sin. But when you look upon Gandhi as goddess, and then you take a dip in there, and then it's a very Shraddha and Bhakti that you have, that's what actually eliminates the sin. And that's what determines the quality of your action or upasana. <coughs> so it's tam yathaya so upasade tadeva bhavadi. It's not te but tam. Tam yathaya so upasade tadeva bhavadi rishwati tattat pujata hai. How can you get results from worship in this kind of things? Yeah? It sounds all ridiculous. He says, well, there is a statement from the Shruti Vedas. He says, Tam yatha yatha upasade. It could be say also yatha yatha upasade. In whichever manner Lord is worship, Tadeva Bhavati, that thing actually happens. So in Bhagavad Gita, this is amply said. Yo yatha maam prapadyande, taam stathayo bhajanyam. In whichever manner they approach me or they worship me, in that manner, I bless them. So, if I have a path away, as you worship him, in that manner, he, he, he returns his grace or blessing. It is Shruti, he, Tattat Puja, Tattat Phalasad Bhare Pramanam, that for a particular kind of a worship, there is a particular kind of result, that's what that Shruti statement means, and that's what is said in the verse 209. <coughs> Yatha yatho pasate tam Phalami yustatha tatha Halot karsha pakarshautu Pooja pooja nusarataha Yatha yatha upasate tam tam zishwaram Atam Devam, just as in whichever manner, Yatha means in whichever manner, all with whatever intention, Yatha means in whichever manner you worship them. Or Yam Phalam, Yat Phalam Uddishya, whatever Phala the result you have in mind, all with whatever intention you worship. So, Tam Phalam E Prasadatha, Tam Phalam E Hu, in the same manner, you receive that Phala or the result. So, this is so, if we receive the result in accordance with our worship, then how come different people seem to get different kinds of results from different kinds of worships? All of them are worshipping the same God, you know, like, like Dakshina Moti, like Lord Shiva. But still, different people seem to get different results from the same kind of worship. Why is it? That's a question that the Tikaga asks here. Nanu, Sarvesam, Ishwaratve, Phalavaishamim, Kutha. That's another thing also. But when you worship certain Devata, the result comes quickly. When you worship Ganesha Devata, the result does not come like that. Or when you worship Ganesha, then one kind of result comes. When you worship Hanuman, yet another kind of result comes. Worship third Devata, different kind of result comes. Looks like even though all of them are gods, Sarvesham Ishwaratve, when all of them are gods, Phalavaishamim Kutaha, how come by worshipping one form you get one kind of result? Usually different Devata specialize in different things, you know. And therefore, you approach them with a certain request and you get that kind of a result. How come different worship seem to give rise to different kinds of results or different devata seem to give different kinds of results and different people also are worshipping the same devata seem to get different results. So different people worshipping different devatas get different results or different people worshipping same devatas also get the different results. Kotaha, Phalavaishamyam, Kotaha. How come there is this diversity in the result? It is asking that Pujyanam, Adhisthananam, Pujyanam, 
पूजा अर्चना दिन पूजना नाम अर्चना दिन जो सात्विक आदेशन है वही सब में मिथ्या है तो वसिप इज इन भगवदगीता डिस्क्राइब एस ऑफ थ्री काइंड सात्विक राजस है एंड तानस है एंड दो फोर पीपल ऑटोमेटिकली वसिप इन अकॉर्डिंग टू दर डिस्पोजिशन में यजन ते सात्विक आदेशन यक्ष रक्षाम से राजसा प्रेतान भूतगणाम सामने यजन ते तानसा जना है so those people are satvik they are disposed to worship gods those people are rajas meaning active aggressive greedy want to acquire and achieve things they automatically go to those forms which can give those results yaksha raksham see yaksha means for worshiping of power and wealth rakshas also means power so people who are rajas they will always worship those deities which can give you power and wealth and things like that प्रोतान भूत गणाम स्थानीय बट पीपल हुआ तमो गुणी मीन दर क्रुअल टू ये सट्राइज इज मोर प्रोडामिनेंट एंड दे वॉन्ट हर्ट हार्म सम पीपल और दे वॉन्ट दैट काइंड ऑफ पावर विथ विच दे कैन हैव स्वे ओवर अदर्स नो दे कैन हर्ट अदर्स प्रेतान भूत गणाम स्थानीय तो फल वसित प्रेता मीन द स्पिरिट मीन घोष एक्सेट्रा नॉन नेचुरली यू डोंट नो ट्रेल दम There are a number of people in India also who go to uh, cremation grounds and, and perform all kinds of uh, upasanas. There are people who go to graveyards and do things, and all sorts of upasanas are there. And there are people who worship different devotees, people who worship different kinds of things in order to get different kinds of results. And therefore, there is a difference in the form of worship, whether it's a sattvic worship or rajas worship or a tamas worship. So. पूज्या नाम सिमिलरली देवता अगर ऑफो थ्री काइंड डिवोटेज आर ऑफो थ्री काइंड देवता अगर ऑफो थ्री काइंड इट इज वन ईश्वर आलो नो डाउट बट डिपेंडिंग ऑन द उपाय ही ऑल्सो बिकम थ्री काइंड सो गॉड आर ऑल सात्विक यक्ष एंड राक्षस ऑल ऑफ देम आर राजस एंड भूत प्रेत एक्सेट्रा आर ऑल तामस सो देवता अगर ऑफो क्लासीफाइड थ्री वेज द डिवोटेज आर ऑफो क्लासीफाइड थ्री वेज एंड द मैनर ऑफ वर्शिप ऑफो इज थ्री फोर वेन यू आर इन वर्किंग ऑल दोज लो स्पिरिट Then the worship also involves all kinds of low or uh, form of worship, like offering blood and flesh and stuff like that. You know, so that kind of worship is there. Or in some case, well, often other kind of materials like milk and honey, etc. So that's a different kind of worship. Or you offer food and things like that, fruits and what not, different kinds of worship. So the method of worship, the devotee's worship, they are also different. and that is what determines the variety of result why is there superiority and inferiority of the result so that is why falotkarsha apakarsha utkarsha means superiority apakarsha means inferiority so what is this what decides the gradation of the result pujya puja anusaratah it depends upon in what manner you approach god with what intention you approach and who you approach and how you approach all of that decides What kind of result you get? <coughs> so, by the way, the upasana also is discussed. By the way, upasana means meditation or worship. So that also is discussed here. <coughs> But we are not interested in this. Samsari ka phalasiddhi evam bhavatu. All right, this we are talking about samsaris. That those who worship the devas for some limited ends. That is called samsari ka phalasiddhi. Attainment of different kinds of ends within the realm of samsara. Let it be like that. Mukti hi kasi upasana dhodi. We are not interested in any any abhyaya or material worship or material prosperity. We are interested in the shreya sa. We are interested in the ultimate end called moksha. So by the worship of whom do we get moksha? Please tell us that. So worshiping all the devotees, we get different ends. But kasi upasana dh mukti hi bhodi. By worship of which deity? Do you get mukti or moksha? Iti asanga gnana vidare kena kena api na bhavati tiyah. Well, mukti or the moksha cannot be attained by anything other than knowledge. And so, then what is the place of all the upasanas? These upasanas or forms of worship, do they have anything to contribute with reference to moksha? Yes. If these upasanas are performed with a desire for the result, then the upasana is yielded the limited result. However, the upasana or meditations or worships are performed, 
without desire for any limited result, then they give rise to what we call antakkana shuddhi. So purification of the mind and therefore upasana worship also becomes unnecessary preparation. So for purification of the mind as well as for what we call concentration of single pointedness of the mind. So when upasana are performed that way, then they indirectly become means for knowledge. So that's the reason of discussing the upasana here. <coughs> However, ultimately one has to pursue knowledge. One has to know the truth because what we call bondage is purely a product of ignorance. And ignorance can go only by knowledge. Therefore, jnana vyatare kena mukti kena apina bhavati. There is no way that you can get liberation without the knowledge. And that's what is said in the verse 210. Muktistu brahma tattvasya. Jnana devana chanyatha Svaprabodham vinamaiva Svasvapno hiyate yatha Mukti hi, mukti stu, however mukti or what we call liberation of freedom Brahma Tattva Siddhyana Deva Mukti can come, liberation come only when can come by knowledge of Brahma Tattva, the truth that is Brahman. Not a anyatha, in no other way can you gain liberation. <coughs> Illustration, how do you say that? So without knowledge you cannot gain liberation. Tattra Dushtantamaha So, in order for us to see how knowledge alone can give us liberation and nothing else, the author gives here an illustration. Svaprabodham idi, svaprabodham vina, naiva svapno hiyate yatha. Svapna, the dream, or the deep sleep in the dream state, yatha svaprabodham vina na hiyate. The dream cannot be destroyed or eliminated unless you wake up. There is no other way, you couldn't do whatever else you want. You cannot eliminate sleep and dream unless you wake up. There is no other means. Because it is a product of sleep, and sleep can go only by waking up. And so, Svajagranam Antarena Svanidra Kalpita Svapna Yathana Nivartade Tha Brahma Tattva Jnana Antarena Tha Jnana Kalpita Svasamsaro Na Nivartade Iti Bhavaha Just as the dream, which is the product of the sleep, it cannot be eliminated unless you wake up. And when you wake up, then you know the Mithyata on the dream. Tatha in the same manner, Brahma Tattva Jnana Mantarena. Since what we call samsara, meaning the life of birth and death or the life of limited existence, is there only because I feel that I am limited and that sense of limitation comes only from ignorance of the self and therefore it is a knowledge of the true self or true knowledge of the self, meaning self is Brahman, that knowledge alone can eliminate the sense of limitation and that alone will eliminate what we call the samsara. So, Brahma Tattva Jnana Mantarena, without the knowledge of the Brahma Tattva, Tad Jnana Kalpita means Brahma Tattva Jnana Kalpita Samsara, Sva Samsara Nani Vartate, Samsara that has been projected merely from the ignorance of Brahma Tattva, that cannot be eliminated. So, this has to become very clear in our life, that the ultimate problem is only ignorance of Brahman or ignorance of self, nothing else. There is no other problem in life other than the ignorance of the self. That's a pr- fundamental problem. From that all kinds of problems arise, all right. But ultimately we should see that every problem that we experience, we should be able to trace it to ignorance. If we trace it to something else, then it will, it will only, we will go only that far. If we think that our problem is because of lack of money, or lack of something else, or lack of, I don't know, the comfort, lack of security, lack of affection, and lack of friendship, lack of recognition, if you think that these are the problems, you keep on solving those problems, and the fundamental problem will always remain. And we must know that, even though apparently it looks as though the lack of recognition is my problem, it is not, the problem is only ignorance of myself. If this becomes clear, then we won't search, or we won't in fact seek anything else. We will seek not money, not comfort, not recognition, Nothing, we will only be seeking knowledge, 
if it is clear to us. So it's very clear, he says, Jnana Devadu Kaivalyam. The, the freedom can be only by knowledge and by no other means. <clears throat> Just as you cannot eliminate all kinds of problems of dream unless you wake up. You are dreaming and experiencing all kinds of things there. The thief is chasing you and all sorts of... When will you ever be free from that? And not as long as you are in dream. Only when you wake up from the dream, then alone you can become free from that. And similarly also, when you wake up from this greater dream, that we can really become free. <coughs> Then you see, all the time these Vedantins keep on comparing the world with dream, you see. They give the illustration of dream. He takes an objection to that. He says, Nanu dvaita nivritta lakshanayaha mukte svatna dhushtantena tattvoda sadhyatva vidhanam anubapannam. You say that this mukti, mukti is what? Dvaita nivrittihi muktihi. Meaning freedom from division or freedom from duality is what we call freedom. What is bondage? Bondage is nothing but the sense of duality, sense of division. That I am different and the world is different. That division keep, makes me feel a sense of isolation or a sense of limitation. When I become free from that sense of division or duality, there is a division between I and the rest of the world, division between subject and object. As long as that division is there, so long definitely there is a sense of limitation. And therefore, what we call mukti is nothing but Freedom from the sense of division or duality. So, Dvaita Nivritti Lakshanaya Mukti He. Mukti is nothing but Nivritti or elimination or resolving what we call Dvaita or duality which itself is a product of ignorance. Swapna Dhrishtantena Tattva Voda Sadhyatva Vidhanam Anupannam. You say that Mukti is Tattva Voda Sadhya. This Mukti can be attained only by Tattva Voda, meaning by the knowledge of Tattva, the truth, and that you are in fact, uh, con- conveying through the illustration of dream. You know, sometimes you give illustration and you seem to make a point, but it can be an, an inept or improper illustration. It is true that you cannot become free from dream unless you wake up. But then you are comparing the world also with dream and trying to tell us that you have to wake up from this world as you have to wake up from the dream world. And we don't think that the world that we come across, a waking world, can be compared to dream. Waking world is a real world, is a tangible world. And therefore, you cannot say that, like we wake up from the dream, that we have to wake up from this world. And so this comparison of this world of samsara with dream is not an apt comparison. Nivartyasya dvaitasya svapna tulnyatko abhavat This waking world, which is what the world of duality, it cannot be compared to dream. Why? This is what we call tangible reality, you know. And dream is not a tangible reality. It is merely a pratibhadik satta or a subjective reality. The universe is objective reality. That is subjective reality. Dream is what? Asthai, all the time changing, transient. This world is constantly there. It is verified again and again. What I saw yesterday, is what I see today, is what I am going to see tomorrow. So Manduki Karika discusses all these points. That objects, the dream world are all the time fleeting objects. These ones are sthai or lasting objects. That one is Pratibhadi Sattva, a subjective reality. This is what we call objective reality. And these kind of differences are there between dream and waking state. And therefore you can't say that waking state is dream. And by calling it dream, you dismiss it and say that you have to wake up from this great dream. So we find that there are many, there is no similarity between the dream and the waking state. And therefore, it is all right to say that you have to wake up from the dream. But it is not proper to say that you have to wake up from the waking. Ityasankya Anyatha grahana rupatvena svatna tulyatvam astyeva This is well. It is true that the dream is an illustration and the waking is illustrated. One is drishtanta, other is dashtanta. But between drishtanta and dashtanta, that doesn't have to be a total similarity. So sadrushya has to be only amushena. There is some element between the illustration and illustrated can be identical or can be comparable and not in every way. We do not say that this world is in every way a dream, otherwise of course this would be called dream. 
The fact that we call it waking world means that it has some different aspects as compared to dream. But in certain aspects it is comparable to dream. And that's why we call it mithya. As far as mithya pro is concerned, the waking and dream are comparable. Not as far as the nature of reality. One is objective reality, one is subjective reality. In every way they are not comparable. But anyatha grahana trupena, grahana rupatvena. Anyatha grahana means perceiving something false perception or perceiving something different from what it is. For example, where there is rope and perceiving the rope as snake is called anyatha grahanam. There is what we call agrahanam and anyatha grahanam. Agrahanam means non-perception or ignorance. Anyatha grahanam means vipreeta grahanam or false perception, erroneous perception. So not seeing the rope as rope is called agrahanam and seeing the rope as snake is called anyatha grahanam. So in that anyatha grahanatvam, dream and waking are comparable. How? So there is there is agrahanam, meaning ignorance of the reality, both in waking as well as dream. And when there is advitiyam brahma, one without a second, I superimpose duality in the waking world, and similarly also I superimpose duality in dream world. So. Waking and dream both are compar- comparable in as much as both of them are anyatha grahana, meaning false or erroneous perception. There is superimposition involved in both waking as well as in dream, and therefore both of them are mithya. One is a lasting mithya, other is fleeting mithya. One is objective mithya, other is subjective mithya. But mithya both are, and so in that anyatha grahatva or mithyatva both are comparable. And therefore, this waking world can also be compared to dream as far as that element is concerned. Anyatha graha rupatvena svapna tulyatum astyeva. Definitely there is a comparison uh, between dream and this. And an Upanishad also says, Aitare Upanishad says, which will come later. Here he quotes from Nasimha Uttarata Apani Upanishad. Trayamati etat susuttam svapna maya matram. Etat footnote number three says, Jagrat. Trayamapi, all these three, <coughs> Etat means Jagrat waking, Susuptam means sleep, and Swapna means dream. The waking, sleep, and dream, all of these are Maya Matram, all of these are nothing but Maya. All of these are Mithya, all of these are projected. Dream, sleep, I mean, uh, and waking, all of these are projected upon the same self, upon the same reality. All of these are states of Maya. Maya alone is dream. Maya alone is sleep and Maya alone is waking. All of these are different states of Maya. Not states of Atma, but states of Maya. In as much as they are states of Maya, all of them are comparable. One is, states are different. In one there is no knowledge at all, the deep sleep. In one there is all the knowledge of waking. In one there is unclear knowledge, the dream. Okay. So all those differences may be there, but they are all what we call states of Maya. Just as we have eyes, and water and vapor, all of these states of H2O alone, and similarly also, all these three states are only states of Maya. It is Shrutya Abhi Tattvat Mayam, therefore don't say that these two cannot be compared. Definitely, they can be compared, and that's what is being said in verse 211 here. Advitiya Brahma Tattve. Svapno yamakhilam jagat Isha jivadi rupena Chetana chetana atmakam Advitiya brahma tattva From the standpoint of advitiya brahma tattva It is true that from the standpoint of waking the dream is mithya but from the standpoint of Advitiya Brahma Tattva, Brahma Tattva is Advitiya, one without a second. Akhilam, I am, idam Akhilam Jagat, I am Swapnaha. This whole entire creation, even what we call the tangible waking creation also, is Swapna or dream. In as much as dream is a superimposition, and so also waking is superimposition. Isha Jiva Adirupena Vartamanam. Chetana Cheta Chetana Atmakam Yadir Akhilam Jagadasti. This whole creation consisting of Chetana and Achetana, sentient, insentient. Beginning from Ishwara, 
the also is a part of Jagat, and Jiva also part of Jagat, and the Jada and Chetana, whatever we have, all of that, Vatmanam Yad, Akhilam Jagat, the entire creation, that there is Advitiya Brahma Tattva Svapna Haiti, and therefore, as far as Advitiya Brahma Tattva is concerned, the whole thing can be the projection, and therefore, it is a dream. And so, it being projection, Brahman alone is recognized as waking, Brahman alone is recognized as dream, Brahman alone is recognized as deep sleep, and therefore, there is a false recognition or an grahanam. In that sense, they are equal, and to the whole universe is what we call Swapna alone. And therefore, you have to wake up from their sleep. So it is said, Anadi Maya Sutta Yada Jiva Prabhunyate Ajamanidrama Swapnam Advaitam Buddhyate Gada. As Kaudabhadacharya says, when this jiva is woken up from this anadi maya, from the beginningless, the sleep of beginnings, beginningless maya, then he comes to know his true nature. <coughs> okay. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Kesavam Vadarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavanta Upanaspunaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Bheda Vibhagine Yoma Vasyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha